What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Bass are moving shallow and one of the best baits to catch finicky bass when they push shallow is a soft plastic jerk bait or a fluke. So today what I want to talk about is the three ways that I rig a fluke in order to catch more bass. And then at the end of this video I'm going to talk about one of the secret ways that even the pros don't want you to know how to rig this bait to catch more bedding fish and to catch more fry guarding bass. So stick around, you guys are not going to want to miss this video. So whether you're in the south or you're in the north, things are starting to heat up. You have ice off up north and you have post spawn fish down south and all of that is going to be excellent conditions for a fluke. Those fish are starting to come shallow and when they get finicky man sometimes there's no better way to catch them than with a jerk bait and sometimes you just can't throw a regular jerk bait so a fluke is one of the best ways to catch them. So what I want to talk about is the three rigging techniques that I use. So everybody knows how to Texas rig a soft plastic jerk bait and for those of you guys that don't I'll do it right now. All you do is insert that hook to the nose and you insert it to where that body cavity opens up and then that's where you pull it back out, you turn that hook around just like so, and then all you're gonna do is pull it up and then you're gonna Texas rig it like so. Just like that. And that's a great technique for when you're rigging it around a lot of vegetation, when you're fishing for largemouth specifically, and just a good way to keep it weedless when you're skipping it around cover because skipping it up shallow is one of the best ways to catch fish on a fluke that nobody else is doing because you get that supernatural fall rate of a Sanko but then you can twitch it and really get some crazy erratic reaction to get those fish to really trigger on it. It's great for when you're going behind other guys or when you're fishing in very popular areas that have a lot of people other than you fishing it. One of the cool things that you can do with this bait if you're a guy that misses a lot of fish on a fluke is you can actually add a treble hook right to the back of it. And so all you're gonna wanna do is basically take a little piece of plastic that you would use if you're adding a trailer hook and then all you're gonna do is put that over the eye of this and then insert that over that hook just like this and what you want to do is you want to line it up there's one side of a treble hook where one hook sticks up just like that you can see right there so then you're just going to texas rig it like you normally would just like so but then what this is going to do is this hook's going to come up behind it just like that so now what you actually have is you actually have two more hook points on there that are going to give you a little bit more cushion when those fish are swatting at it this is great if you're fishing for smallmouth spotted bass anything where you're moving that fluke a lot or if you're a guy that just feels like you miss too many fluke fish but if you miss a lot of fluke fish another rigging technique that i'm going to talk about next is really going to save your behind so a lot of times when a bass actually eats a fluke as you're twitching that bait they actually come up and they eat it head first or when they eat it they come from the side and they suck it in well, if you have a large EWG hook like we have right here, a lot of times what happens is you have to turn that entire hook around in order to get that hook to penetrate, right? You can't set the hook and have it hook itself backwards. Whatever way you pull it, it's gonna turn that hook and then the hook's gonna go into it. If you're fishing for smallmouth, smaller largemouth, or spotted bass, as that hook turns in their mouth, it might be out of their mouth before you ever even get the hook point, especially if they eat it head first, because if they eat it head first like this, as soon as you turn that whole hook around, it's gonna go right out of their mouth, right? And so one of the best ways to rig it is actually not with an EWG hook. It's actually with a little nose hook, just like this Trocar TK150. But in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to put a screw lock into the nose. Well, you don't have to, but it makes your life a whole lot easier and you lose a lot less flukes. So all you do is you take one of these screw locks, screw it right into the nose of this bait, just like so. And then you take your nose hook and you hook it right through the nose just like so just like that so now you can see that hook is in there good it's holding that bait gives your bait a ton more action because you don't have that whole body being rigid right you can see that's all soft there's nothing holding that body so you're gonna get a whole lot more movement out of that bait and now when a fish eats that you have so much less to turn you can see that turns on a dime so if you're a guy fishing for smaller fish like smallmouth or spotted bass that are eating it, you're watching them eat it because the beautiful part about a fluke is when they eat it, you can open your bail and let them take it. You know, it's a bait that when they eat it, you can just let them have it. I can't tell you how many times that I'm throwing a fluke, whether it be a white one or this bubblegum color right here, that I literally see the fish eat it and I just let them swim with it, let them swim with it, let them swim with it, and then all of a sudden you see the whole thing disappear, right? That's the beautiful part about it. So then, when you set the hook now, that's gonna turn on a dime. And that also leads me to why I like to throw this bubblegum or a white color, because it stands out, triggers those fish. Especially if you're a smallmouth guy, bubblegum or even the siren color, which is a chartreuse color, which I will have linked down below along with all the rest of the gear that I'm talking about today, really, really triggers those fish. When you throw a brighter color like one of these colors, it really triggers those fish that are visual feeders. You know, if it's, you have, you have clear, 
you have clear water, now all of a sudden that fish is really seeing the erratic reaction of this bait and it just triggers them a little bit more. Plus, as an angler, it allows you to see that bait and actually watch it disappear like I talked about. And so now, this one's not gonna be one that you're gonna wanna skip necessarily because you have that open nose hook, but this is a great open water fluke technique. This is a great, if you're not around any cover, basically this is what I'm gonna go to because now it's gonna be sinking a little bit just like this. But when they eat it, you're gonna get the best hookup ratio possible out of it. So as promised, I do wanna show you guys a secret way that most pros rig this bait when it comes to bedding fish or fry guarding fish especially, and it involves a Nico weight actually. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that Nico weight into the nose of the fluke, just like so. And for this, I actually recommend green pumpkin flukes. That is actually the best color for this. And then you'll take your favorite wacky rig hook or your Nico rig hook, and you insert it into the back of the fluke just like this. Because now what's gonna happen is that bait's gonna fall just like this, and then you can dance it on that bed, and it's actually gonna look like a bait fish that is trying to eat the eggs or attack the fry that that fish is specifically supposed to be guarding. And so it'll come up, but then it'll kind of dart around when you let it fall back down. And so that's a super, super cool way that most people don't actually ever rig a fluke, that you can really trigger a lot of fish. I actually watched John Cox firsthand do this on Chickamauga when he was fishing for a couple bedding fish and a couple post spawn fish. Uh, they were actually guarding fry and the only thing he could get them to eat was a green pumpkin black flake fluke, just like this one, only different color. And so it was really neat to see how it would trigger those fish in a way that no other bait really was. And it's a really high hookup ratio because you still have an open hook. You know, a lot of times when you're trying to trigger those fish, you end up using baits that the hookup ratio is not as good with, but this is one that you'll get them to the house every single time. So let's talk about a few of the colors that I really like to throw and some of the gear that I throw it on and how I'm gonna throw these baits. So bubble gum is probably one of my favorites. It's a great color when you're fishing dingier water or really, really clean water, just so you can see what that bait is doing and you can see when those fish eat it when they actually have it fully engulfed. If you're fishing for pressured fish that are really stingy, that Tennessee shad color, I don't believe this is Tennessee shad, but any of this natural shad color is a really, really good option. And again, I'll have the colors linked down below. And then smallmouth, I really like that chartreuse, that siren color. That does a really good job at triggering those fish. But I really, these two are gonna be my key ones along with a white. You know, you really don't wanna carry a ton of different colors. If you look at the entire list that Zoom has of these baits, there's literally like 15,000 colors. So keep it simple, Tennessee shad, bubble gum, and a white. If you keep those three in your arsenal, you will have every color perfectly made up and you will have every situation covered with the rigging techniques that I talked about. And how to fish this bait is you can do it one of two ways. You can either twitch it really hard, which will get it that nice side to side motion to trigger those fish, or you can do a reel and stop. And so if you reel and stop it, it'll get that bait to wiggle really fast. Seth Fighter actually did this on the St. Lawrence River when he was throwing a siren color fluke, that chartreuse color fluke, he would reel it, reel it really fast. And so what it does is that tail moves and it looks like a bait fish fleeing really, really fast, and then you kill it. And so what'll happen is it'll dart and then it'll kill and then it'll just slowly fall because the fall rate is one of the most advantages that you have with this bait that people don't actually utilize. They try to just twitch it the whole way in and you can catch fish doing that, but pause that bait every once in a while, guys. That bait will just shimmy right down and you'll get a ton more bites on the pause than you actually will actually reeling it. You know, a lot of times when I first throw this bait out, what I like to do is just let it wacky rig down, you know, let it just fall down and you'll actually catch a bunch of fish on the initial fall before I start to really work it. The next is when those fish get up shallow in cover, I love to skip this bait. Skips just like a wacky rig does where you can literally just let it slide across the water and you can put it into some really, really hard to reach places. Those of you pond guys, it's a great bait because it doesn't make a big impression when it hits the water. You know, with those fish being really, really shallow, if you're throwing heavy baits or you're letting that bait hit the water really hard, it's gonna spook them. But with this bait being so light, it really just doop when it hits the water. And so you get that element of surprise, which we all know causes those fish to trigger even better. You can either throw it on a bait caster or a spinning rod. I will have both linked down below. The one that I like is a 7.2 medium heavy finesse jig rod uh, that you guys have seen. It's an Evoker limited series. I'll have it linked down below. I like to throw it on an eight one to one gear ratio reel to really burn it and catch up with those fish. And then the other rod is just a 7.1 medium heavy spinning rod that again, I will have linked down below. But if you guys like this video and you wanna learn more about it, hit subscribe to follow along with the channel. But God bless you guys. Thank you guys so much. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.